good Wednesday morning to you. It's been a couple more days. Uh, I guess I'm not quite doing daily, but I do want to say the lettuce. Wow, look at this. It's getting big and we're picking. So um, I advised my mother who comes out here and picks. Oh, what's this? Oh, okay, it's cut. I advised her basically to go ahead and take, because uh, these were starting to really kind of stand up tall and I was afraid they were going to bolt. So I said go ahead and start cutting out of the middle. Generally, I would think, and somebody please correct me if I'm wrong and you see this. <laughs> um, uh, I think when you harvest off of these plants, you should be harvesting off the outside because it grows from the inside out. In other words, it puts up the new leaves in the middle, and then they get bigger and they end up on the outside eventually. So you harvest from the outside in, but when they start to go up really tall, I think you need to start looking at cutting some of the inside so you don't have lettuce that's bolting. Now these are de definitely standing upright. Now the iceberg is sitting down more like I would expect um, kale to look like. Um, oh jeez. I was going to try and get to transplanting the watermelon today. They're looking really sick. That's not that encouraging. Well, we'll see what we can do with that. Uh, carrots are even taller, I believe, than they were. Let's do a little excavation down here. Let's see if we can't. Just want to see. Yeah, there you go. Now it's starting to look like a carrot. Uh, wish the light was a little bit better for you to see, but it's definitely starting to look more like a carrot, getting bigger, but it's not there yet. So, I'm going to cover it back up, and hopefully that doesn't hurt it too much. Um, just looking up above, I, I'm just stunned by how big the patty pan is getting. Even if it wasn't growing fruit, that's an impressive plant. I like that. Uh, I might be recommending that to my brother and his family. Uh, which is another story I'll be getting into. But let's take a look at the cucumbers. Uh, I have not been out here yet this morning, so more flowers. Uh, more, I'll bet you I can find one that looks like fruit. Uh, but the other thing is I'm trying to watch out for the ones that are trying to poke through and put them back in just so I don't have these escaping the cage. Uh, now this one I was trying to rein it in, but maybe what it'll do, sorry, maybe that one will climb up towards the top. It's got that little tendril. That's my hope. Uh, but looking at the flowers, uh, I'm trying, having trouble finding a good example of a flower with what looks like a fruit behind it. Not quite seeing it yet, so I'm wondering if these are all male flowers. But we'll come back to that at some point. Got to pick something off the Swiss chard. Oh, wait a minute. That looks like the cucumber plant has figured out how to get out. Now I got to figure that out. There it is. And in fact, you know what? There's a flower with a fruit behind it. That's what I was looking for. That has managed to get in behind. So let's see if we can't pull it back in. Okay, now it's back in. Something I just got to keep watching, you see, and I can see more of it coming out this way from the other plant, which has now linked itself onto the Swiss chard. I'm not going to worry about breaking that little tendril off, uh, but that looks like that came through this way, so I got to pull that in. See, I just let it go for a couple of days and that's the kind of stuff that's happening but honestly I probably just missed that a couple of days ago oops uh, just broke off one of the tendrils all right and then I can see what looks like another one coming off yeah I'm not gonna worry too much about being rough on the plant because there is so much of the plant right now <laughs> um, yeah, I think I'm doing okay, but wow, it just it keeps trying to escape the cage. This one's actually latched on. I'm going to have to break it. 
to get it back in. That's got that. That's doing okay. That's all right. So we're good on this one. And you can see right there, I can see a fruit behind the flower. So I'm happy with that. Corn's getting taller. One of the beans has finally found the, the new post. That's a good thing. Uh, the other beans have not found that other post, but that's all right. We'll, we'll wait for that to happen. Uh, all right, something's getting big here. I think the, uh, the zucchini is trying to grow in the front there, but it's just the bean plant. Those leaves are huge. The corn stalk is getting thicker. That's encouraging. But it's also getting up really close to the orange tree here, so I may have to prune off some of the orange tree. Wow, there's a lot to cover today. Uh, the bee, everything is doing so nicely. And then just looking up the hill in the pumpkin path, since I added that new sprinkler head there, the yeah, it looks like the plumeria is just loving it. And so is the uh, green bell pepper. So that's looking really good. Now, speaking of peppers, let's go in the back. And here we are with the tomatoes and peppers and the nasturtium just taking over. Uh, yeah, I gotta cut back the nasturtium. I'll take care of that today. Today is kind of the weeding and I think my week has gotten a little bit more complicated, but it's a good thing. Um, my brother's place, uh, I was over there yesterday trying to help figure out their sprinkler system so they can get their system running and be able to have a nicer landscape because of it. Um, so yeah, it was mainly first get the valves working, then we got to deal with some electrical stuff so we can get a new timer in there. Uh, and I spent most of the time yesterday just dealing with the electrical uh, and mainly mapping out the uh, all the circuit breakers to the house so we could figure out how to shut off certain circuits and deal with some of the electricity. I'm not going to cover that one here because the last thing I want to do is show somebody electrical and then somebody tries something and gets hurt. So if you want electrical, go check out, uh, I think it's called Electrician U, uh, where he does cover mainly the mistakes that people make, it seems like. But I mean, there's 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 a few different channels where you can find real information on, on electrical. But if you don't feel confident, uh, if you don't feel totally confident working on electrical, leave it to a pro. Uh, that's the kind of thing that could kill you. So uh, that said, once we get the electrical done, we'll get the timer wired up and then we got to deal with all of the stuff that's been, all the sprinkler heads that have been run over and stepped on uh, and try and get that up and running. And then we realized yesterday that they've got plants that we can divide, uh, like irises, when they grow very large, they develop sort of multiple clumps, and then you can separate the clumps and go plant other clumps elsewhere. So I think they've got all the material they need to be actually really make that yard look nice. So that's going to be, I think I'm going to try and feature on this channel. So let's take getting back to the tomatoes and the peppers. Um, the tomatoes are looking good. I can see flowers developing right here. So let's pinch that off. Uh, oh, that smells good though. Um, if you've never grown basil, you don't know that. But the smell is really cool when you, and then you can smell your fingers where you just pinched it off and it's a really nice smell. Uh, looks like the cherry picks are doing well. Uh, the poblanos, I think I've got too many. I may offer some of them up to my brother. Uh, this right down here is not looking wonderful, but I did figure out what was wrong with the sprinklers. So it's I'm taking corrective action there, and I think I'll plant some more seeds. Uh, the giant Marconi, I think I got a, at least a few of them, and a giant weed. Giant Marconi, giant weed. Uh, hybrid Nikita, I think I've got one in there, so I'm just going to hope that that one grows. But that wasn't getting a lot of water. Now it's getting water. 
So yeah, that's kind of what all of this is looking like. I know this has been a long update, but um, yeah, things are doing well and more good stuff coming. Now, back to the plan for the day, at least so far. I want to get some more up into the pumpkin path up there. I want to get, uh, where did it go? Huh, over here, <laughs> my watermelons. Um, these are not looking great, but I think I'm going to transplant them as well as a couple of these. And then I did offer a neighbor some watermelons, so I will give him the remaining. Um, that means more watermelon than I was originally planning to plant, but I'm looking at planting about four of these and I'm only expecting that two of them will survive. I'm hoping that two of them will survive. So that's kind of the plan. So I got to get up there, put some more soil up there and get these seedlings in there. counting how many buckets of soil that was I wasn't <laughs> um, I just kept thinking okay one more and then okay one more and then okay one more and as it turned out um, let me just kind of show you I'll take go off tripod here um, this is the vermicompost bin we haven't talked about in I don't know how long um, or just compost uh, but there are worms in there and I managed to pull up a view of them out uh, mix them in with the soil from the next two which I have now gapped so that they can breathe uh, because ultimately let's see if I can do this that's really kind of dry but very clay like this one is wet and clay like so I was mixing the two together to get the moisture down and then throwing enough of this in which seems to be not so much clay like I think because the worms that are in there and the food that I gave them six months ago has finally broken down uh, as far as I can tell that's what part of why I was mixing it uh, and kind of digging in at the end there also because I realized that the drain holes I have on the front of these things well if there's soil all the way down to the bottom it's kind of hard for it to drain out um, so if I could get the soil moved away from the front then maybe it'll drain better did the same on all three of them so that's kind of what I'm thinking on that. Now I think I have enough soil up there to transplant the uh, watermelons. I'm going to put all, all I'm going to put four of them in there. Two of the the old ones that I'd originally planted, and two of the new ones that I planted because I told somebody I would give them some watermelons. And then the other two I'll give to them. That way I assure that I can get some watermelons. Um, maybe I'm being a little greedy on that. But uh, I'll do that, and I also want to swap out the sprinkler head that's up there, uh, so it can spread out. It can spread out a little further than the bubbler that I currently have up there. The bubbler is really nice for a short throw and getting a lot of water on plants. And the uh, I'll I'll bring you up there and show you. But the uh, plumeria is doing really nicely, and the uh, bell pepper. I was concerned that the bell pepper wasn't going to survive. It was wilting really badly, so that's why I got the bubbler in there and got it a lot of water, and it seems to have bounced back. So, next up, let's uh, trans do some transplanting.
let's give that a shot. That should take care of sprinkling all that. All right. That's going a little further than I thought it would, but I didn't want to put a whole 15 footer in there because that just kind of be wasteful. Um, I'm not sure what that is. I'm guessing it's more like an 8 footer. I thought it was like a 4 or a 2 footer, but anyway, it should get water onto everything. Yeah. I think we finally got this part of it done, so let's figure out what's next. Okay, I think we're going back to the tree here. The uh, transplant of the watermelon uh, was kind of important to me because I didn't want to lose. I had one left of all of the larger melon type uh, fruits that I was growing, the, the watermelon, the pumpkin, the spaghetti squash, and the cantaloupe. Uh, I wanted to get them all going and now I finally have all of them in the ground. The watermelons are really kind of tiny, but then the cantaloupes right next to them, it, where the last ones I planted, those are also kind of tiny. So, but uh, yeah, I got that done. Now let's attack this tree. Well, I guess I finished without realizing that the camera had shut off. And believe it or not, I actually did fit that entire pile in the green can. Uh, it's a lot of air in between those leaves, so if you cut it down to small enough pieces, you don't have to go completely crazy, but if you cut it down to small enough pieces, you can fit that much into a green can and then some. Uh, but I think that's enough for today. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, I, it's, you should have been able to see, well, we'll just come around and look. Let me see if we can't tilt you up. Well, didn't mean to go that far. There we go. You should be able to see there's quite a bit more sunlight coming in there. Uh, and that means we'll get more sunlight on the tangerine tree, which probably means more tangerines next year. Um, but that's how it goes with uh, citrus trees. They kind of have a season. But this tree, I don't even know what it's called. Um, it just grows like crazy. So I cut some major pieces out of it and then had to cut them down to fit them in a can. We got the other cans if I cut more of it, but 
again, I think that's enough for today. I've got other things i got to get done. So, yeah, that's it for today. Let's see.